In this episode, you'll learn the basics of the sometimes confusing Java logging ecosystem. And that's because there's many popular logging libraries and it's difficult to know when to use which library and also what happens if you're using multiple libraries in the same project. And to demonstrate all this, I set up a simple Maven project and added the most common logging libraries to it as Maven dependencies. And as you can see, there's log4j version one, version two, the Java Util logging framework, and you don't need a dependency for that. It's included in the JDK since Java 1.4, then Apache Commons logging, and then the simple logging facade for Java SLF4J with its simple binding and also with the logback binding, but you're going to learn about that in the next episode. And if you want, you can check out the source code of this episode, look at the pomxml file, and inside you'll see all the needed Maven dependencies for each logging library. And you'll also find configuration files for log4j version 1 and for version 2. But now back to the my crazy logging application and let's get started with logging. First on the list is log4j version 1 and I'm going to make it explicit here. So you'll see I'm calling arc apache log4j logger and then get logger. Then I have to put in the my crazy logging app class because I want a logger for this class. And then I can extract a variable and call it log4j logger. And then maybe I'm going to use it and print out something like log4j logger speaking here. And you can double check the log4j logger is configured to one, print out all the lines to the console, and second, create a log file and print out the line in the log file as well. Good. Now, the same for log4j version 2. There you can start with arc apache logging. So there's an additional package, sub package in here called logging, log4j, then log manager, get logger. Already a bit confusing, but pretty much the same. Call this guy log4j2 logger. And there you want to print, basically do the same thing. So you just print a log4j version 2 logger here. Now comes my good old friend is the Java util logging logger. Also call get logger here. Put in the my crazy logging app class, but in here you have to put in a string, so you have to call get name. Extract it, call it the jewel logger. Then the jewel logger, you might want to print out something like jewel is in the house. Good. Now the Apache Commons logging framework, also quite common in all the legacy projects. And you'll have to call arc Apache Commons logging, then log factory, get log my crazy logging app class. That's the JCL log. The JCL log is going to print out go away all the way JCL. Doesn't really rhyme properly, but anyway. And then there's the simple logging facade for Java, and you can simply call logger factory get logger my crazy logging app extract that to a variable as well logger and then for the last time print out something like slf4j to rule them all maybe good and as i said before we're going to talk about logback in the next episode now run the main method Wait a second till the code compiles and the application boots up. And as you can see, we got no exceptions. That's the first main takeaway. We actually have a couple of four or five different logging libraries on the class path, and it all just worked. And when you look at the console, you can see the log4j logger is speaking here. It's up here. Then we have the log4j version 2 logger here, so that also worked. Let's see if Joule is in the house. And yes, it is. The Java Util logging framework is also there. Commons logging, JCL, 
is also there. And then at the end, we have SLF4J to rule them all, and it's also there. Great. And we've got two new files. It's the log4j log. When you open it up, you can see the log4j log is speaking here, but also the JCL library locked inside the same log file. And that's an interesting point already, because the comments logging library basically uses the log4j configuration file whenever it finds log4j on the class path and doesn't come with its own configuration file. And that's something to look out for. And then look at the log4j2 log. And as you can see here as well, you'll see that the log4j v2 logger locked just fine to the log file. But when you go back to the my crazy logging app, let's think about something. In the main methods, you basically specify directly what logging framework you want to use. Log4j1, Log4j2, and so on and so forth. And that might be okay if you're working on a small personal project, but what happens if you're working on a big legacy project with multiple logging libraries? Now suddenly you need multiple configuration files and whatnot. And then also what happens if you're building a library and you want to share that library with a ton of developers in the world? And then suddenly they have to use your logging framework as well. And it would be much nicer if you could have some sort of abstraction level and let the other developers decide at deploy time what logging framework they want to use. And that's exactly where SLF4J comes in and what you're going to learn about. And you're going to learn the ins and outs of SLF4J in the next episode. Also, what all of that has to do with logback and how SLF4J works together with all the other logging libraries. And then we'll see if we can improve this example a bit. So let's get right after it. Bye.